Yeah, so today I really would like to kind of give you an overview on how expanders are useful in graph algorithms. And uh, so I would like to start with like uh, give you like the rough notion of expanders, what, what are they, right? So um, expander usually are like, when you think of expander, it's like not just a connected graph, but it is like a robustly connected graph in the sense that it's hard to disconnect them significantly. So like when you f try to find any cut that is balanced, there are like a lot of edges, not just one edge that are connected. So that's like an expander. And it occurs in many areas, um, happen like naturally or artificially, but it appears in many areas. But an expander in the area of TCS um, have been used like uh, a lot to construct super, super strong object like uh, error correcting code, pseudorandom generator, uh, sorting network, and so on. So it has been used for like, uh, like to construct really special object that is super strong. However, like when you look at the area of graph algorithm, um, the graph that you, that you get usually is just like a sum arbitrary graph. Okay. So it, it is not expander. It's not some well-crafted uh, for you. So now the question that like, uh, we want to like, answer or like, uh, see today is that um, how come we can exploit expanders even in arbitrary graph? Okay. And, and can we do that? And yeah, so we, we will see today that the answer is definitely yes. And um, that's the goal of the talk, how, right? how to do this. And um, so this tutorial will be like, uh, basically separate into two main, like, uh, two main parts. Um, the, first, the first thing that I would like to tell you is just to give you like, a survey on like, uh, how how impactful this expander is in like um, several sub area of graph algorithm. And then we will see like a, a bunch of tools behind this like very exciting development. This is like, um, the, first, the first session. And then the second session that I will talk about is, um, is to, to dig into like uh, inside the black box of, of the tools that I, I will talk in part two. Like uh, we will see like how to like what's the the technique inside it, and I will end with just like a, some exciting future direction for you to 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 see and try to pursue. I hope. Yeah. Okay, so that's the plan, and so yeah, let's let me just start with um, uh, part one, which is um, like the the recent application of expanders, and in this part like. You will see some keyword that I will use, but will not explain. Uh, this keyword includes uh, expanded decomposition, expanded routing, and expanded pruning. Like I just want to mention these keywords just so that you know that how impactful are they? Are them? Are there? Uh, but uh, in part two, we will see what what are, what what exactly uh, like uh, they are. Okay, and just so that we are on the same page, like throughout this talk, throughout the whole tutorial, like n is the number of vertices, m, number of edges, okay? And I will use O tilde to hide polylock factors, and O hat uh, to hide like n to little one subpolynomial factor. And um, so when, when I have like algorithm with this time, we, we call it near linear time. And like when the algorithm is like, um, O hat M, we call it almost linear time. This is the, the word that people use in this area. I, don't, I didn't in, invent it, but yeah. Okay, near linear is better than almost linear. Okay, okay so expanders, okay. What, are, like, what is the um, definition? So I would say that the graph is a is phi expander. If, if you look at any set 
or any cut, okay, and it's cut as like this, okay, where S is on the smaller side. Then you have that um, the, um, the cut edges is quite big compared to the volume. So what I mean is the total weight of edges crossing the cut here, this is a total weight crossing the cut, is at least five times the volume of the cut. And by volume, I just mean the, the total degree. And you can think of total degree as just the total weight of edges incident to S. Right. So this thing count both um, edges that cross the cut and also inside the cut. Okay. Okay. So if, if this is true for every set, so every set is kind of expanding, have a lot of edges going outside, then um, I said that the graph is, an, is a phi expander. Okay. And um, on the other hand, if there is some cut that violate this constraint, then I said that this cut is a phi sparse cut. Okay. So in other words, a graph is a phi expander if there is no phi sparse cut. Okay. And in this talk, like um, the expander, when I said that the graph is an expander, I mean it in, in quite a weak way. Um, so I said, I would just say that the graph, like when a graph is expander, I mean the graph is like one over polylog expander or one over into little one expander. Like this is in contrast to like the area of like um, error correcting code and like um, like classical area where they really talk about constant expander. So, but we will just look at this weak notion because it's going to be useful in arbitrary graph. Yep. Okay. So that's expander, and now um, I want to mention how they they have impact in in different models of computation. Just start with a classical one, which is just a static algorithm. You have input, compute some output. Okay, and Expander has been used um, as like um, very successfully in the paper by um, by Spielman and Ting. Okay, um, they they use expander decomposition to get the first nonlinear time algorithm for electrical flow. And by the way, I would I would like to like uh, digress a bit on how impactful this paper is by Spielman and Ting. They they start this new paper and have, of course, like an extender decomposition. And, but they also like, uh, start talking about um, some techniques called like ultra specifier or J3. They also like, start like, another area called uh, local clustering. Clustering, and they also use like a continuous uh, optimization, and these four things has become like super impactful in in like a, in the past twenty years, and like kind of generate like super like a lot of papers and um, you will see this uh, basically this thing like how it culminate in like a paper with uh, of, of Rasmus and and, and others uh, soon tomorrow but like it's just so amazing to me that one paper stem like a stem like a four different uh, different ideas that are so impactful so like I really like am amazed by it like uh, by this uh, paper. Anyway, um, they also use expander in this, in this paper. Um, and, and then expander has been used like a further to get um, near, first nearly near time algorithm for Mac flow and Oblivious routing. 
and so on. Like everything here is based on expanded decomposition in the linear time. Um, Expander has been like uh, used crucially to get something called um, like to get um, deterministic algorithm too. Like it, it is the only approach to get deterministic almost linear time algorithm for several problem. Basically, first it's just all problem above here. You can do it deterministically. How to do it? Use expander. That's the only way right now that we know. And um, we also like um, um, the, like we can also use it to like compute exact mean cut and uh, vertex connectivity. Yeah, everything here is based on this deterministic expanded decomposition. Okay, so that's like uh, how how expanded are used in a static graph algorithm. Um, next is like dynamic er, dynamic algorithms. So just to make sure that you are like you understand the model, let me give you one example how dynamic algorithm look like. Um, dynamic algorithm is something like this, where you start with a graph, right, and you basically want to ask some question. For example, if the, this graph is connected, right now it's yes, but then there will be a sequence of updates given to you. So, for example, here I say. One edge is deleted. I delete an edge from three, one to three. And we can just ask again if this new graph is still connected. The answer is yes. Then the new update come. And you, you need to answer quickly. Uh, here if the answer is no, and so on. Okay. So the sequence of update keep coming to you. You keep like a, re repeatedly need to answer something quickly. You don't want to spend time from scratch. Like, okay. And so, so the, the idea is like in general, um, dynamic graph problem, you have a graph, then there is a sequence of updates. It can be edge insertion, deletions, and the task is either to answer some query, like uh, if the graph is connected, or you can maintain some objects on top of the graph, like minimum spanning tree, keep updating them. Uh, and so on. Okay. And the goal is to get fast update time. Ideally, like we want polylog time. So that's that's like a, like one slide of the whole area. Like uh, something is like this is like kind of the goal, the general goal of this area. Okay. And now, expanders has been like used a lot in this area as well. So, like. So I, how, how does it start? So I mentioned before that like in 2004, Shui and Teng um, developed like a, some variant of expanded decomposition that is fast. So this is good in the static setting. When, this, when, it, when does it start like, um, to make impact in, in the dynamic area? Well, like um, in this year, um, Mihai Pratascu and Mikhail Torab uh, show how to use expander in almost dynamic graph. So this is just um, the, the what, what, do we, what do I mean by almost dynamic graph? I mean, like, it's a problem where you can handle only one batch of updates. So like 10 up, ten edge update is given to you in one go, and that's it. You don't have any, like, next batch coming. Okay, so like, that's the, that's, um, that's the model that they can can use, can can handle. So it's not almost dynamic. It's not really dynamic yet, but like can, kind of hand, handle some kind of updates. And then like um, um, next ten years, um, now it turns out that expander is successfully used in the dynamic graph algorithm. And like this is um, the paper by Danupon, me and Christ Christian Wolfnelson. And how how does it work? This is because we introduced some technique called expanded pruning. This is going to be one of the the technique that I will like uh, give tutorial about. Yeah. And once like uh, you get this technique, um, then in the last few years, like uh, so many like. Uh, 
there are many uses of extended in dynamic graph after that. Um, like we like um, the, a lot of exciting things happen, and I want to tell you how, how can that happen in the next part. Right. So what happened? So like the, it is used to get like a, a bunch of faster dynamic algorithm for all kind of graph problem, like a minimum spanning tree, edge connectivity, approximate map flow, mean cut, and so on. Also, fastest deterministic algorithm. Um, so, like uh, for reachability, shortest path, and, and spanners. Yeah. And by the way, like it's quite important. This, I want to mention what like that, getting deterministic dynamic algorithm or the one that work against adaptive adversary is quite important because, like, once your algorithm is deterministic or works against adaptive adversary, it can be useful for, for getting like a fast static algorithm because you can use it as a subroutine inside another static algorithm. And for example, dynamic spanner has been used crucially to get like a fast nearlinear time MAC flow um, that Rasmus will talk about. And for example, the decremental shortest path was used to get the um, fastest Gomery Hu tree algorithm, which is almost linear time as well. Yeah. Okay. So it impact in dynamic algorithm, like go back to static algorithm too. Okay. And everything here rely on expanded pruning. And I will explain it soon. The next thing, the next model that uh, Expander has, uh, has make impact is uh, the area of distributed algorithm. Okay. So let me tell you a bit about, about this model. So, um, so there is a model called congest. Okay. And imagine that you have this graph, right? And now each of the, each of the node, you think of it as like a computer, and each edge link each computer. And now they want to communicate to each other, but we will only allow local communication. That is, each node can send a message only to its neighbor in one round. And also, we also have that each of the message that's sent to each other need to be like a like let's say one number, one small like one number which is like a let's say n bit number, or you can even think of, of one bit number, okay. Um, if you don't care much about log factor, yeah. And now the goal is to compute like this computer want to talk to each other. And the goal is to compute something about underlying network. For example, what is the, you have, you have this network. What is the distance between node one to node four? Or what is the minimum cut of this whole network? Like, they can only talk locally, but they want to conclude some maybe global information of the network. Okay. And the goal in this area is to minimize the number of rounds. So that's the, that's the model. Okay. Now there is like very closely related model called congested click model, okay. which is basically strictly stronger than congested model. So what's the difference? The difference is really like in this part. Instead of, instead of allowing local communication, I will allow all to all communication. So like in this model, like now one can talk to four, although they don't have an edge directly directly link them to each other. Okay. And but they still want to like conclude some information about underlying network, the blue thing. But I allow them to talk, like everyone to talk with each other. Okay. Okay, this is the two model. And okay, you can imagine that congested click should be like 
easier to get fast algorithm because you just allow more power to, to, for the algorithm to, to, to do something. And indeed, like, uh, it used to be the case, and it is the case. There, is a, there are some separation for sure, but like, I want to like, uh, look at some uh, problem called triangle listing. Okay. So in this problem, you, you, have, you have a graph, and you basically you just want to list all the triangle um, in the graph. That is, you, if there is three nodes that have edges linked to each other, you want to report them, report all of them. Now, in the model, congested click model, like people know the type bar, which is in, in like a to the one third. You can talk about like a listing k click as well, uh, and the bar is tight. And now people try to get the same, like a, want to do the same thing in congest, right? And like a, the bar was worse, um, it was slower. And then, like, it turns out that with the use of expanded decomposition and also expanded routing, okay, which I will talk about. Question. Yep. So the second one, do you assume exponential time local computation? Um, we, local we actually don't, okay. Uh, we don't need local exponential time. time. Mm -hmm. you we don't need exponential time local computation because like you think of k as a constant yeah oh, k is a constant. yeah yeah yes. right but yeah in this model you actually if sometimes you really need to to spend exponential time we allow that we just count the number of rounds in this model yeah but this algorithm in particular they don't they don't need that yeah, my point was that like there is like a gap between the two models, right? And it turns out that with the use of expanded decomposition and routing, um, you can actually improve this. Could you please, yeah. Sorry, um, so for triangle listing, why is there such a difference in time complexity because of this one decomp? Well, um, it's just that like, um, people don't have the best algorithm yet. <laughs> um, so, it's, why the, like you you ask why it is slower than than like n to the one third right or like, like why does expander decomposition um, improve the time? Yeah yeah I'm I'm gonna explain it soon yeah yeah good yeah but like this is what happened basically using expanders you can match the bound that that is there in congested click, that is stronger model, you can match the, this bound and get it to be like a, the same bound, okay? So, like, in this sense, like, it looks like using expanded decomposition, you can, like, um, you can bypass locality, which is a constraint in congest model, you can, even in congest that with local locality constraint, you can match what is known in congested click. I try to explain how can this happen soon, okay? So, but what happened is that you can kind of transfer the strong result in congested click without locality, locality constraint to congest. Yes? Um, how did the space complexity of congest and congested click compare? Space complexity? Uh, I am not sure, but this is like the the parameter that we don't we don't quite care about here in in this model. It seems to me like uh, when everybody can send messages to everybody, then every node should store a lot of messages. Right, right. So in this model, you can assume that it might be interesting to to try to like 
say that, okay, what if each node can remember up to some space uh, throughout the whole computation? That's a good, good question. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, yeah. All right. But this is good. Like, uh, please like, uh, ask more and more questions. I'm super happy about this. Yeah. OK. OK. But like, you see, like, this is like a quick survey. But I hope you see how successful like, these two are. Like, you have like, kind of these two that make impact into like, uh, three different things, three different models of computation. And um, I, I think like uh, there, there are new applications even in streaming and, and like uh, streaming model and others. Yeah. So, so now the next part, what I want to do is like now to describe the key tools and explain how this the, this success can happen. Okay. So that's that's the second part. OK, so what my plan is, is this. Mm. So what I wanted to, to tell you is like, uh, to answer two key questions. The first question is, like, why uh, expand a grid like, for graph algorithm? And the second is, OK, your graph is not an expander. How can, how can you use expander still? And for each of these questions, we will like uh, see like uh, several tools behind it, like, um, and I will go through it one by one. Okay. All right. So let let's start with like the first thing. Um, expander are great because they are algorithmic friendly. Many question, many graph problems that you want to solve, once the graph is an expander, it becomes like super easy. Uh, to solve very quickly. Okay. And okay, the first question I will talk about is expanded routing. Okay, so what is this problem? It's a problem where you start with an expander. Okay. And now um, you can query the graph for a bit, right? And then the next thing that will come to you is a demand graph, D. Okay. So this demand graph is, is like, it's a graph such that for every node U, it has like the degree of node U in D is at most the degree of node U, node U in G. Okay. And what do we need to do with this demand graph? What you need to do is this. I need that. Um, I want to return a set of UV path. Okay. For all edges UV in D. Okay. And this path needs to be such that every path is short. Okay. And at the same time, an edge in G can appear in like not too many paths. It has low congestion. So let me look, let's look at this uh, picture. So you think of D as the demand, like each edge of D is like a demand. If there is an edge from U to V, what you need to do is like uh, you need to find some path inside the, like uh, your underlying graph G. You need to find a path connecting U to V. Okay. And this path should be short, first of all. And at the same time, like um, not too many edges use it. Like, like if you look at any partic one particular edge, they don't like uh, they are not used by too many paths, so low congestion. That's a problem. Okay. So. So now, like, let me tell you a bit. Like, intuitively, this is like uh, something that you would like when you want to communicate in the distributed network, right? When you have the demand from U to V, you want to, it's like you want to send a message from U to V. So this message should be short, first of all. 
so that it doesn't take too many, many rounds to send from U2V. At the same time, no edge should have a lot of congestion because if a path use, like too many paths use, use one edge, like a message cannot go through this one edge. Like it takes too many rounds to, to send through this, this edge again. So short and low congestion is like intuitively like a good thing to, like, to, 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 get, to get for distributed computation in the, in the congest model. But anyway, come back to this problem, right? It's just like you have a graph, you want a set of paths that is short and low congestion. So it turns out that um, you can solve this problem in almost linear time if the graph is an expander. And this is not quite clear how because like um, one way to solve this, this problem is like to be greedy. Uh, I would not tell you why this algorithm works, but one way to solve is just to be greedy like this. Like given, uh, given one demand, look at one demand, like a route, like a find the shortest path from, from U to V, from that demand, okay? And go to the next one, and maybe like you delete, like you delete uh, the edges along this short path, and go to the next demand and try to route. Once like you cannot route, um, then then like you you just revert all the edges that you have deleted back, and like and this will work, but this algorithm, although it works, you need to find shortest path for each demand. So that like that takes like um one shortest path computation for one demand. There can be M many demand, right? Because like, um, the total number of demand can be as big as M. So that algorithm takes you M square time. You compute shortest path many times. But it turns out that like, you can actually totally significantly improve this, like that greedy algorithm that takes M square time and just get an algorithm but that is almost linear time. Not just that, um, so okay, so this is like, you can think like this is like a basically constant time, almost constant time per path, right? So that's, that's good. Also, um, Sorry. yeah, the greedy algorithm do the following. Um, for each demand, UV, uh, find the shortest path from U to V. Like this is the demand, gra demand graph, this is G. Find shortest path from U to V, delete them. Delete the path. Go to the next demand that you can still route, uh, U to V2, find shortest path, and delete. As long as there is some demand that you can route, um, just keep routing them and keep deleting the path. And I claim that you must be able to, to route like a one over log fraction of the, the, of the demand. And once you have, like, until like you ha cannot route any demand. And once you have done that, you have removed a bunch of demand, revert everything back, and uh, repeat. Yep. Okay, yes. So what kind of expanders do you need here? One uh, over n to the little one. Yeah, yeah. One to the one over n to the little one expander. Yeah. Can you do better to expand this better? Very good question. It would be like a super important. This is a, one of the big open problem. If let's say you have even like a constant expander, can you improve this almost linear time bound to near linear time, like m polylog n? This is a very good question, and it is a bottleneck of so many problems in graph, in fast graph algorithm. Yeah, very good question. Yeah, but can you, can you like, decrease the uh, factors for length and uh, number of paths if the expander is better in the same thing? You, you, can, you can do some trade-off between this and this thing. Yeah. Um, we, can, we can talk more about that, yeah. Some, so like, um, yeah, some trade-off is possible. The point is like, if you want this to be polylog, this to be polylog, and this is like a m polylog n, 
that's like the big open problem. OK. Good. So yeah. So this is, a, this is a key subroutine that is used in so many things. And not just that, you can compute this in almost linear, linear time, right? If you try to compute this in the, in the congest model, it turns out that you can do it too. And the total number of rounds is just in the little one. Okay. So it's quite, it's very nice. And all of this can be done deterministically as well. And now, yeah. Now I want to like explain how, like, how extended routing is, is used in congest, right? So, because now you can imagine that suppose somehow that the graph, the underlying graph in the congest model is the expander. Okay. What expanded routing allow you to do is that for any node u, right, it, you, this node u can exchange degree many message with any set of node in small number of rounds. And this is for any set of node, not just its neighbor. Right. Like if you just use local computation, then you can exchange degree many message with just a neighbor, okay, in one round. But if the graph is an expander, using expander routing, like this path will, will give, like this set of path will, will allow you to like exchange message with any set of nodes now. So you can think like uh, expander allow like kind of all to all communication, like congested click. Okay, there are some small overhead, which is into little one, and like, um, but that's kind of fine. You know, you just pay like some some overhead. Right. So like, this is kind of the explanation behind the success in in the in congest. And okay, the graph might not be expander. How to deal with that? We will do something called expanded decomposition, decomposition, which I will explain soon as well. Okay. Yes. Oh, my by overhead I mean like uh, I mean instead of using one round, I just pay into little one rounds. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's like one Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, I ask quick question. So, like in the definition of expanded routing, so if you have weights of demand, like you you can have a scenario where edges are like more important than other edges. If the if the demand graph is weighted, yeah, yeah, you you can you can like um like it it would be fine too. Um yeah, so like the demand graph, if this is like a weight too, it means that you need to find two paths from U to V, and and like um this would work as well. Um, actually, I mean, if the graph is weighted, then I'm sure that this thing exists. I'm not super sure about the running time. Yeah, uh, but good question. Yeah. Okay, I need to think a bit. Yeah. Um, Oh, okay. So here when you say degree of uh, messages with any set of nodes, but the demand graph is only degree constrained by the original graph. So can you change the demand graph uh, neighbors each and every time? Can I change the demand graphs? So you keep changing the demand graph to actually route messages to every possible node? Yeah, so okay, good. So. Like I can change the demand graph, right? Because like you can think like for one round, a bunch of nodes want to send, want to exchange a message with a bunch of nodes. This is like a demand for round one. 
like a like a for demand for phase one that takes like a into little one round. After that, you get a new demand. You can you can like uh, find a routing for that like second demand too. Like the demand can keep changing. Yeah, for each phase, you need to have this degree constraint for, for each phase. Okay. Good. Any more questions about expander routing? Okay. Good. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I will not have time to like, dig into the white box like, uh, in, inside how to do expander routing. But, um, but it's like one of the very um, powerful uh, tools in this, like, uh, in this area, like uh, expander-based algorithms. Okay. Another thing that you can do on expander, and it allows us to like, exploit it quite, quite a lot, is that uh, you can specify expander very like in a very simple way, okay. So let me tell you the problem again. This is a new thing. The, the new pro this new problem is okay. You have an expander. Now what we want to do is to compute a cut specifier of an expander. So we want to compute a subgraph edge, okay. Such that first. Um, this graph now can be weighted, but it will have it will have like a few edges, so s small number of edges like sparse, near linear in n. And at the same time, basically the size of the cut is preserved, like the cut size in in edge. For every cut, it's within one plus F, one plus epsilon factor to the, the cut size in G. So it's a sparse graph, and yet every cut size is preserved. That's why we call cut specifier. Okay. So that's a problem. And this problem kind of makes sense even if, the gra even if your graph G is not an ex expander, and people know how to solve it. Um, um, like, um, Paper by Kaga, Benzo and Kaga uh, show how to solve this for a general graph. However, if the graph is an expander, then there is like a super simple algorithm that I want to tell you how to do it, and it easily extends to the dynamic setting and like, and it's just simple, so it's nice to know. So how to do this, right? Well, the algorithm is simply this. Simply this. You go through each edge, uv, and in g, right? And you're just going to put this edge into your subgraph edge with this probability, pe. And pe can be computed super easily. pe is just like 1 over degree, mean minimum of the endpoint of the two end. 1 over minimum of the two endpoints, degree of the two endpoints. 1 over mean degree u and degree v. Okay. So for each edge, you compute the degree of two endpoints, get like PE, sample it with PE, and if you put it into the graph, then you've set the weight to be 1 over PE. Okay. So you need to put this weight so that like in expectation, the expectation of this weight is 1. So in general graph, this PE will be something like a 1 over strength of an edge, or 1 over effective resistance, which is more complicated to compute. But once the graph is an expander, it just like kind of trivialized to like this thing, which is super easy to compute and maintain. You can imagine that when the graph is dynamic, the graph keeps changing, you can maintain the degree of each node super easily. So, so like this, this can be done in the dynamic, dynamic setting. Great question. I would assume this only works against an oblivious adversary. Is there an adaptive? Okay. So, to just do this algorithm in the dynamic setting, 
uh, it will just work against an active adversary. Yeah. I, I, oblivious adversary, sorry. Oblivious adversary. Good question. Is there an adaptive variant? There is an adaptive variant, but it's, it's, it's worse than this one. Like, it has a crude approximation. Yes? So, um, in that approximately equal to, are you hiding polylogs? Yes, yes. Uh, how it looks like, it should be something like log n and like some over phi square factor here. So, um, if this is like a phi expander. So, so does that also uh, then follow from the fact that um, the, the minimum of the two degrees is the connectivity between u and v? Exactly. And, and in general graphs, we know that something with uh, inverse connectivity actually goes Exactly. Like you can replace this by connectivity between u and v, um, and now once the graph is an expander, you know that the connectivity between u and v can be computed just from looking at the degree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, specification is useful and good in general. It should speed up a lot, a bunch of things. And if your graph is expander, it's easy to specify. That's the point. OK. So this is just two examples of things that are powerful and become very easy on expander. And there are more. And um, I actually put like a more example of what is becoming easy um, in the exercise. Uh, so. Um, but in, anyway, a bunch of things become easy on Expander. And next thing is that I want to say like that Expander are robust under updates. Okay, that's another crucial thing why Expander is so powerful in dy dynamic algorithm in particular. Okay, and this is where I talk about Expander, expander pruning. OK. So yeah, so this part before, like this part, I will just talk about like how to use expanded pruning. And then after the break, uh, I, I will actually explain how to, how to do expanded pruning. Okay. okay, so but for now, like just in the intuitive level, how can, why expanded are robust under updates, right? Like so. The way to think intuitively is the following. Suppose that the graph is not an expander. Okay. So that like there can be like a sparse cut like this, that you del delete two edges and then your graph breaks into two big components. Okay. So like just small small deletion, small updates can result in the big change that like um two big components occur. Okay. But now, instead, if, if your graph is an expander, then you know that there is no sparse cut. So if you delete these two edges here, you know that along this cut, there must be a, a bunch of other edges. You cannot disconnect two big things. And if you delete a bunch of things here, suppose that you, you spend, let's say, like a K deletion to delete something. OK, you might disconnect something. But the part that you disconnect, the volume of that part is, that is disconnected should be of size around k as well. Okay. So, small number of, update, of updates result in small change in expander. Okay. So that's like a intuition, and now let's put this in, in like the extreme. What like to what extent you can exploit this robustness. Um, um, so this, this is here the statement of expanded pruning. What do I mean by expand, ex, expanded pruning is in this slide. Okay. So the setting is that you start with your graph. Okay. The graph is, uh, is an expander initially. And then um, there is some edge deletion, some edge update can be insertion or deletion. 
So at, after time one, you delete one edge. Okay. This edge. So what the algorithm of expanded pruning will do is that it will return you some set P for pruning set. And this set P will be such that if you look at the complement of P, the complement of P, the complement of P remain an expander. Then the next update will come, and the algorithm will kind of slowly grow the set P, and the complement is an expander again. And at any time, the, comp the, the, the set P will keep growing. Like, don't, don't read this thing yet. I will, I will go through it soon. But this is the picture. The, the, your set P, the pruning set, will slowly grow, and at any time, Everything else outside P remain an expander, remain good. Okay. Okay. And so on. Yeah. And now, so what? What exactly? Like um, the more precise statement is this: like the algorithm will remain, main, will maintain the set P, the pruning set P, right? such that P grow very slowly. So the volume of P at time I looks like a, it's like a I times some overhead. So P just go like grow like a basically constant per, per update, almost constant volume per, per update. And you can also update the set P very fast. There's an algorithm to maintain this thing fast. Okay. Make sense, the statement of this thing? Yes? This is only for incremental, because for incremental, you don't, as an insertion of an edge, it does not matter to you? The, the, um, so, good question. But So, this is actually for both insertion and deletion. Why is it the case that for insertion, you might need to do something? This is because if you have this graph, and maybe you can insert a bunch of things to be this thing to become a click, and now this thing become like a sparse cut. <laughs> yeah. Although, like you have a, a bunch of like a connection, it is like sparse in in this sense. Yeah. Sparse relative to inside. Okay. So this is like what extended pruning is like, um, what it does. So like in high level, it means what? It means that if you start with an expander, it's like each update can cause you only small problem. The, um, the set P is like a problem set, the pruning set, that keep, it just grows slowly, and the rest remain extended that we love. Okay, and, and like this is really possible when a graph is an expander. If there is like a sparse cut, if the graph is not expander and you delete two edge here, right? Even if you like, okay, you delete this thing. After two deletion, even if you want to guarantee that the complement of your set is connected, your set must be this big already. So it's just impossible without having expander. Okay, so P can grow slowly when the graph is an expander. Okay, so that's what how how robust expander is. Yeah, and now we will see soon how to use expander pruning for some application, which is this next part, which I will talk about expanded decomposition. Okay, like so. We have seen like a bunch of things become nice and good once the graph is an expander. Okay, we are graph algorithm people. Your graph is arbitrary. What to do? Right? Is expanded decomposition? Okay, what what is this thing? Okay, 
So expanded decomposition is a subroutine that does the following. You have a graph and some parameter phi, the expansion parameter, the conductance parameter. And we will just output a partition of nodes okay. such that each part, each vi, okay, each part vi will induce an, ex an expander. That's the first thing. And at the same time, the number of edges crossing each part is like a phi fraction of edges that are just crossing. So this is like a, some kind of very natural graph clustering, right? You, you have a graph, you cluster it into well-connected parts. Each of these parts are sparsely connected between each other. Okay. And this is like a, the one, one fact about any graph that, like, um, that, um, that is good to know. That is, once phi is less than one over log, like maybe 10 log. Yeah. Then any graph is really just like, any graph is a disjoint, like a, a collection of disjoint expander plus a small fraction of edges. Okay. And this is the reason why, why I, I, I only talk about like a weak expander because when, when phi is like a more than one over log, uh, this doesn't exist. But once phi is small enough, then like expanded decomposition exists. Any graph is just this joint expander plus small fraction of edges. And you can, like, you can try to convince yourself, actually, that this thing exists. And the algorithm is actually quite simple to, to show that this exists. How? What we can, what we can do is just the following. Um, you have a graph. And let's see if there is a five sparse cut in the graph, suppose that is no no phi sparse cut. Then what? Then your graph is a phi expander, so you can just return the whole thing. One cluster is an expander. But if there is a phi sparse cut, then maybe this cut is phi sparse. Then you cut it and recurse on both sides of a graph. Recurse on G S and G induced by S V minus S. And because you, you kind of only cut through sparse cut, you cut only through sparse cut, the edges that you will get like between cluster will be like a basically at the end, uh, you, you get only five fraction times log m. Not too hard to, to, to calculate this, but yeah. And all, you only stop when, when every part is an expander, right? So that's how you get it. Okay, this algorithm is certainly slow. Uh, why? Because um, it might be the case that you find a five sparse cut and you cut it and recurse here. Spend another linear time to find another five sparse cut, another five, like keep, like you might need to keep repeating find, finding a five sparse cut. So it's like at least quadratic time because you find linearly many cuts each time you, you spend at least linear time. But it turns out that there is a way to compute this fast and deterministic in uh, almost linear time. We will see how to do this after the break. OK. But for now, let's see how to use it. Yeah, question. The bound type, uh, is it? Okay, good, 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 good question. So this bound, log m here is tight. You need to have log, log m. Oh, no, I meant for phi, so when phi is less than one by 10 log, and you told it exists for general graphs. Like, right. Like a type? So, yeah, you cannot, you cannot do it if, um, if phi is more than this. Um, um, I think the counter example is hypercube. When the graph is a hypercube, 
you cannot get like um, uh, like when the graph is hypercube and and you you have this parameter, parameter phi that is more than that is more than one over log expanded decomposition doesn't exist. Yeah. Is there a way to um, determine or approximate uh, the biggest phi for any graph, any given graph? Uh, I guess you can just do by the research, right? Uh, like try to see which phi, like, I, I'm not sure, like um, you ask like uh, what is the biggest phi such that expanded decomposition exists? Uh, well, if, if we have a given graph, can we Okay, find got it. So you ask like uh, you have a graph, you want to know like what is the expansion of that graph? Yeah. Yeah, there is like you you ha there is an algorithm to approximate this. Uh, the, the best approximation ratio is now is like a square root of log n. Yeah. It's called ARV algorithm. Yeah. So if we assume that phi is constant, is there some kind of assumption you can make on the graph where you can get a good expanded decomposition? Good question. Uh, in so the question is like. Uh, if phi is a constant, what class of graph expanded decomposition exists? I'm not sure. Yeah, good question. So if we define singleton vertex as an expanded, then I think we'll have a default or like, a, like basically expanded decomposition is nothing but each and every singleton vertex, which has like intercluster edges, which are like at most constant many m. So is that? Okay, good way of thinking it. Ah. Uh, like suppose phi is constant and we have a like interpersonal edges are at most order of them, log them. Oh, wait, <coughs> yeah. And then Actually, good, 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 sorry. Actually, good. If you have this bound, um, then once phi is more than one over log, you can just read, okay, good. If you have this bound and phi is more than one over log, then you can just return a singleton uh, as a as a extended decomposition. It trivialized. I guess what I mean is this. Very good point. Um, once phi is more than one over log, and um, like, and you want to, okay, maybe the way to say is this. This extended decomposition like, um, is not trivial only when phi is less than one over log. And you cannot improve this log term. Yeah. Okay. So if, okay. So please like, uh, forgive me <laughs> when I say that this thing doesn't exist when, when phi is more than one over, one over log. That's wrong. Uh, when phi is more than one over log, what you can do is just return a singleton as uh, your expanded like a bunch of singleton as expanded decomposition because this thing become m, and if everything can be crossing edges, but you cannot improve this log m term. Yeah, that's that's what I mean, because the the counter example is hypercube graph. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so now, um, yeah. What I, before we go into how to compute expanded decomposition, I want to tell you how to use it, how to combine expanded decomposition, expanded decomposition with expanded pruning to get something. At least one example should give you an idea how how they are used in the area. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is like, uh, we're going to like get dynamic version of expanded decomposition and use it to get dynamic version of cut specifier. Okay. So what is dynamic expanded decomposition? Uh, it's just the same object, except that now you have a graph that undergo edge updates. I just want to maintain this 
partitioning of vertices at all time. And now it sets phi, parameter phi to be something like interlit, 1 over into little 1. Okay. And what I'm going to show you soon, like a, like a few next slides, is that you can actually get this thing easily such that the update time to maintain dynamic version of decomposition is just like a into little 1. And the algorithm is deterministic too. Okay. Well, so how to do this? Just recall that we have expanded pruning that like, given update to expander, you can kind of keep pruning it so that the rest is an expander. Okay. So what we're going to do is just that, this. To get dynamic expanded decomposition, you start with by computing, just start by computing Expanded decomposition initially first. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. You you should think like this is maybe um maybe think like this is something that is not too small. Like by here, I mean actually something that is bigger than polylock. Yeah. Good point, but yeah. Um, this is just something bigger than polylock, thing like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of abuse of notation. This is not small, but bigger than polylock. Yeah. Okay. So, how to do this? Start by computing expanded decomposition. Right. You get an expanded decomposition at like at the beginning. And now there are some updates, some edge update given to you. Um, if an edge is like a is between cluster, then you do you do nothing. Like let's say that let's let's assume for now that the number of updates is not too many. Okay. So if the update is between cluster. You just increase the intercluster edges by just a bit. If the edge is inside a cluster, then you just run expanded pruning inside each, each expander. What will happen is that each of the expander you will get like you will get some small prune prune set, pruning set in it. Right. And it guarantees what? Expanded pruning guarantee that the remaining part here is an expander. Okay. And now you also know that the total size of the pruning set, right? The size of your pruning set kind of grow basically by almost constant for each update. So as long the, the total volume of the, your prune set would be small, the volume here would be small as long as the number of update is not too big. Let's say the number of, up, of update is like less than m over polylock or m over into the, like, let's say m over into the epsilon, yeah, some, some like not too big updates. So this prune set in total, the volume is small. So what I can do is just trivially treat every edges incident to this guy as intercluster, intercluster edges. So everything here become like a singleton cluster. Right. Which means what? Which means that the total number of intercluster edges, there can be some part here, which are small. And the total part here, they are like a small too. Just m over into little one. So that is also that that already gives you expanded decomposition, right? Yeah. So, so that that's it. Um, is it loss in the expansion on the biggest? Uh, the expansion will lose. You will lose expansion a bit actually by like a constant factor, but um, 
yeah, throughout the whole update, you just lose by a constant fact, like constant factor. Say it again. So you just make the P singletons. Make the, the everything in P singletons. Yeah. All right. So you see that, OK, if the number of, of updates are not too big, you can maintain this thing. And once the number of, of, the number of update is like a big enough, like a more than like a, a large fraction of your graph, then there is like a standard technique in dynamic algorithm that, OK, there are a bunch of updates already. So you can just kind of restart your whole data structure. This will not happen too many times anyway. So that's, that's fine. Yeah, I use the fact that the P themselves is small because I just say that I want to take this P, everything that I prune, as like a, everything that I prune become a, a singleton cluster. So every edges incident to P become intercluster edges. And I want to bound to, like the number of intercluster edges need to be, need to be small. Yeah. So if, if P is like becoming too big, then then like a number number of intercluster edges is is too big. Yeah. But you don't have any bound on the maximum degrees of it. So so why the number being as small means that the number of edges are small? Yeah. Like the my my pruning set actually, I bound the volume, the number of edges incident to P. Not, not just the number of nodes. Yeah. OK, good, good. All right, so, so now you should think like, OK, we can maintain this decomposition dynamically. OK, so we want to use it for getting cut specifier dynamically. Okay. So in this problem, we have a graph, arbitrary graph, that undergoes updates. And we want to maintain a cut specifier of this graph, of this dynamic graph, at all time. Okay. Which is just like a, again, like a sparse graph, sparse weighted graph, such that every cut is preserved. Okay. So how to do this? So, yeah, we will see how to do this using dynamic expanded decomposition, right? OK. And the idea is the following. This, I will start by, by this, OK? Um, I, yep. Oh. OK, sorry. Yeah. No. OK, so what we're going to do, right? The starting point is the following. We're going to do something called, like that I call repeated expanded decomposition, which is just to repeatedly decompose on crossing edges or on intercluster edges. So what I, what I mean is this. You have a graph, decompose it. Set five parameter to be like a small enough so that okay, this is this is still quite a decent expander, but the number of intercluster edges should be like less than half, m over two. So set five to be small enough so that number of intercluster edges is less than half. And let me call this thing e prime. The intercluster edges is e prime. This from e from e prime from e from e prime. You can just look at the graph induced by these E prime edges. Like I just kind of create a graph, the red graph here, just by looking at the graph induced by this set of E prime edges, intercluster edges. It's a smaller, it's a smaller graph. And just do expanded decomposition again on it. Right. 
and then I will get a bunch of clusters. And this intercluster edges now will be half again, so it's like a m over 4. And I think you get an idea. We can repeat this, log n times. After repeating log n times, like a log m maybe, yeah. then everything, every edge will be, will be in some cluster. There is no, no more like a intercluster edges left. So what do we get from this repeating uh, expanded decomposition? We get that given any graph, right, you can partition edges of any graph into expanders such that each vertex will appear in at most log n, many expanders. Just because each, each part here are disjoint, expander, and there are log n level, so each node can appear in log n many expanders. OK, now we're going to use this thing. Oh, and one thing is that, OK, maybe it's a bit high level, but I want to assume like now that you, you should think like we can maintain this thing. Because it really is like, um, like repeated expanded decomposition. For each expanded decomposition, we can maintain it. This is, like, I hide something under the rock, the rock here, but let's say that you can maintain it. Okay. The graph undergoes update. I will maintain this structure of the graph at all time. And the update time is just n to little one, because for each expanded decomposition, you just take n to little one update time. But having this thing, now, um, I will show you how to really get a dynamic cut classifier now. So the algorithm is just, you have a graph, right? Then you compute this repeated expanded decomposition here, right? And what I'm going to do is just for each of the expander, for each expander here, specify it. We know how to specify expander. So when you, when you do the update on the first expanded decomposition, it will generate like se several edges in the second expanded decomposition, right? Yeah. And uh, so the number of edges to grow exponential that you need to when you find each level of the expanded decomposition. Yeah, so the question is like if I do, I prune on the first expanded decomposition, this update might affect the next ex expanded decomposition and it, it blow up. That's your concern. Yeah. So yeah, this is the thing that I also, OK. So, so the way to think about this is that um, you don't actually like uh, kind of, what you do is actually like for everything that you prune in every level, you just kind of put it together into a, like a junk graph that, that grows like a, they all grow like up to like at some point and then when, when the junk graph is big enough, you try to recompute. So like the, the, the propagation doesn't go for each level. It just come to like a one junk graph together. High level, but like that's the idea. The update is amortized. Yeah. One can make it worse case using some techniques, but yeah. OK. Anyway, that's like just the details on how to maintain repeated expanded decomposition dynamically, but how to use it, right? So on each expander, specify it. And you know how to specify it. Just kind of sample each edge with probability that is proportional to 1 over minimum of the, two end, the degree of the two endpoint. And you can, it's quite easy to maintain this thing and dynamize it. And, but now what you need to do, suppose that you have specified each of the expander. You just need like let your specifier, the final specifier, be the union of all specified expander. So 
each of the specifier for each expander here, you get like a bunch of sparse graph. This is a, you get another sparse graph here. Union them together. That's your final answer. Okay. And I, I, I claim that this union gives you a one plus epsilon cut specifier of graph. So the reason is this. Um, this rely on like um, the fact that cut, specif cut specifier is uh, like are, decom are composable. That is, if you have like a, if you start with some graph, G, okay. So like in one sentence, like a union of specifier is a specifier of the union. But like, let me draw something to explain this. If you have a graph G, and let's say I partition graph G, like partition edges of graph G into G1 and G2, and I specify G1 and specify G2, then the union of this specifier is like a specifier of original graph. Not hard to like uh, convince that this is the case. Yeah. Suppose we care only about records, not update time at all. Do we still incur this entity called if you want factor EPS then? Um this can be made polylock, yeah. Right. So actually this thing can be made polylock even up for update time. Um just because like um, the, the expanded pruning can be made polylock, uh, actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So this is like a, maybe an exercise, like if you, you can try to convince yourself that the sparse, cut specifier are composable. And now you see like this, this, this is algorithm. All you need to do is really just like kind of maintain this structure dynamically, and on each extender, maintain a specifier of, of each extender, which is like a, can be done using some easy algorithm. Again, I, I kind of hide some, some like implementation details on how exactly to dynamize this, but you should imagine that, okay, it's like simple algorithm, like this number can be maintained easily for sure. You can dynamize it. Question? N no, this is not deterministic. Okay. So you I need to sample. Okay, but does it only work for oblivious uh, updates? This one works only for oblivious updates. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ah, just for some historical notes, um, like there, by now there are many, many uh, algorithms for combining something called spectral specifier, which is a notion stronger than cut specifier. But like the first algorithm by Spriemann and Tang that actually compute spectral specifier actually use this, uh, like it's a static algorithm that use this, like exactly this, uh, uh, approach. What I just show you is just how to like uh, do that algorithm by Spearman and Tang. How that algorithm like seamlessly dynamize. Okay. okay. So what we saw is this, these two tools, and how they combine it into dynamic expanded decomposition, and the fact that. Um, you can get a fast specifier and expander, allow you to get cut specifier dynamically. And okay, here I say adaptive, but adaptive here means like a different algorithm, like with cruder approximation. But like you can get like a bunch of dynamic cut specifier using this framework. Like some variant is the adaptive, some variant is oblivious, and so on. And there are many, like, 
you, you, you know that like, there are many other notions of specifier in graph algorithm. It can be like a like specifier that, specifier that like, um, preserve K connectivity and so on. Each of those specifier usually become easy once you have expander. So what, and those easy algorithm on expander can be dynamized too. And that's how like, you get like, other dynamic algorithm for several other problems based on the fact that you can compute specifier like easy on expander. The fact that you can have fast routing algorithm on expander also allow you to get like many other like dynamic algorithm, um, which is about like routing, like shortest path, reachability, and so on. Okay. And so this is just like a kind of super high level what is going on in the area of how expander is used in the dynamic area. Okay. Just want to mention one thing, and I will talk about this too in like the last thing in, in this tutorial. Like in this paper, we use directed expanded decomposition and vertex expander. So the point is like this framework, combining decomposition and pruning, this framework kind of work with other variant of expanders too. I imagine that there will be new variant of expander, um, not just in this talk. And once you have this new variant of expander and fast algorithm for pruning and decomposition, you should be able to solve other problem. Okay. Um, uh, how many? It's, it's now, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, now is good time to take a break. <laughs> um, do you have questions? Maybe that's the time to go.